In New York, Dan excels as a car salesman due to his keen eye for detail, earning him the title of Salesman of the Month once again. He enjoys his simple, peaceful, low-key lifestyle and looks forward to celebrating his anniversary with a special getaway alongside his wife, Jessica. The couple is parents to three children, Nina, Kyle, and the youngest, Max. Nina and Kyle frequently butt heads, causing stress in the household. Dan is particularly frustrated with Kyle's incessant gaming, urging him to spend time outside instead, while Nina's desire to switch college majors due to her boyfriend's influence adds to his concerns. Despite Dan's attempts at guidance, his words fall on deaf ears. Kyle cleverly maintains a secret streaming setup at a friend's house to continue his gaming undisturbed, and Nina, asserting her independence, views herself as an adult beyond her father's advice. While the parents are excited about their annual tradition of attending a carnival, Jessica finds herself longing for more excitement and spontaneity beyond their customary routines. After enjoying a roller coaster ride, Dan promises to create more unpredictability into their future outings. Unexpectedly, their moment of affection is interrupted when someone deliberately snaps a photo of them kissing. This invasion of privacy escalates as the individual taunts Dan, posting the image online and asks what he is going to do about it. The situation worsens when the man spills his slushy on Dan and calls Jessica fugly. Despite the provocation and disrespect, Dan walks away. He hates violence, and Jessica says she didn't want Dan to fight the guys, but she's internally disappointed in her husband. At home he feels as if he has to hold back, the confrontation doesn't leave his mind. Jessica finds an outlet in boxing, where an accidental punch to her sparring partner leads to an unexpected friendship over smoothies. Opening up to her new friend, Gwen, who is also a travel agent, Jessica shares her sense of feeling trapped. She appreciates Dan's qualities as a husband and father but is frustrated by his contentment with their life as it is. While out shopping with Max, Dan's attention is drawn to a suspicious man seemingly watching him. Acting cautiously, Dan is quick to react when the man makes a move to attack. Even with Max with him, Dan skillfully manages to fend off the attacker's advances, neutralizing him with ease. The locals are surprised and even his neighbors notice something different about Dan. At home, Dan opens up a secret compartment containing guns, outdated passports and cash. Alarmed, Dan contacts Augie, a former associate, to arrange new identities for his family, indicating they're in danger. Augie suspects the threat comes from Dan's old boss, McCaffrey, and advises Dan to disappear as soon as possible. Turns out, Dan is an ex-assassin, he has kept it a secret from his family. Most likely McCaffrey discovered him because of the picture at the carnival. Dan seeks out Nina at an editorial meeting, only to discover she quit three months ago. After a small incentive, her friend sells her out. He finds Nina under the bleachers, upset that she abandoned her dream, but there's no time to dwell on this as they need to collect her brother from the chess club. However, Dan is disappointed to discover him at their neighbor's house, together with his gaming setup. Cautious, Dan tells his kids that they are going on to Vegas. In the middle of Jessica's work, Dan persuades her to go on a spontaneous trip she so much desired. Despite her early reservations, she becomes excited to go, but as they are about to leave the parking lot, McCaffrey's men are already waiting. As the bus passes through, Dan skillfully evades the pursuers. A moment later, they catch up to Dan, but he still manages to maneuver around without his family suspecting a thing. Pretty hard to get away when you're being tracked by a satellite. Dan drives into his workplace, and closes the gates on the pursuers. He then lifts the car up and finds the tracker. He hides just in time for the pursuers to miss him in his car. The family still has no idea. Dan sticks the tracker on his colleague's car and tells him to give that car a spin on the highway. The pursuers take the bait. With 33 hours to go, his wife and kids are tweeting and posting about their trip. To remain anonymous Dan seizes everyone's phones, it's a device-free trip. The only problem is that they don't know the way to get there. At the travel agency, after another little incentive, the clerk finds them maps for their road. Their family is actually bonding for the first time in a long time. Meanwhile McCaffrey personally sees Dan's house and is sure his family is still in the dark, one of them will slip up at some point. At the same time, while talking with his sister, a stranger recognizes Kyle from his streaming career and asks for a picture. Dan sees Kyle and the girl taking selfies and knows that McCaffrey will be on his tail soon, so he decides to continue driving to avoid being found. McCaffrey hired more men to track Dan, and he notices three of them briefly. His family is asleep and he turns on music on all of their headphones, while preparing to use lethal force. His mirror is shot, but he manages to get rid of one. Barely managing to avoid a crash and boinking into one of them, his family is still asleep. Honestly, his family is one of the heaviest sleepers I've seen in my life. The third guy just goes flying. After driving all night, Dan finally closes his eyes, but his family is awake. Half a mile away from college Nina wants to attend, she argues her way into seeing it. A gorgeous place with a lot of festivities. Jessica even shows off her keg stand skills, even Nina finds that kick-ass. A big part why Nina wanted to see the campus is because of her boyfriend, Trevor, attending this college. 
On a campus tour, Dan spots a German man on his phone and suspects he might be an operative for McCaffrey. However, Dan realizes his mistake when he is unexpectedly attacked by a different individual. They start to fight in the chemistry lab, and after a short scuffle, Dan incapacitates the assailant, rejoining his family shortly after to keep moving. But Nina went to see Trevor. She finds him cheating on her. She returns crying and Dan teaches her a martial arts move that she uses on Trevor, making her feel much better and appreciate her family more. Back on the road, the family bonds even more and as Nina is driving, she thanks Dan for always being there for her and thinks of getting back her editorial position at school. At a small motel, parents finally let off some steam. Jessica is in love with the spontaneous Dan. She feels that something is different about him. Dan calls up Augie, who is on his way to deliver the new identities to Dan and his family. The only problem is that he hasn't told them yet. He then sneakily returns the phone he stole and tries to prepare himself for the conversation. Kyle joins him and they finally talk about him being a streamer, it's something he's good at, like pro-level good. He wants to prove it over laser tag with Dan. They bet on it. First to three kills. This should be a breeze for Dan, being ex-assassin and all. He gets the first tag, and the second. Then Kyle retaliates with two of his own, but Dan gets the last one. Kyle feels conned, but the two grow closer. Finally arriving in Las Vegas, they are staying at one of the top suites in the city, but first Dan has to run downstairs. He meets with Augie, who hands him their new identities and a one-way flight to Vancouver, for a hefty payout of course. Dan prepares himself as he plans to tell Jessica the truth over a romantic dinner, while the kids babysit Max. Dan tells them not to leave the suite under any circumstance, not like they will listen. McCaffrey's men are already aware of Dan's location. Being a popular gamer, Kyle goes to the HyperX gaming arena and is even recognized and even gets to meet Valkyrie. She even lets him join her team for the finals in Valorant, but McCaffrey's men are on them as well. While Nina gets comfortable with one of the gamers that gave his spot to Kyle, Kyle is single-handedly destroying the enemy team. Dan tries to tell Jessica the truth, but is interrupted at every moment and decides to postpone it a bit more and go gambling with her. But after a while, decides to check up on the kids, but his call goes unanswered, so they head back up. Jessica is fooled by dummies that they're sleeping, setting Dan's mind at ease. Jessica goes to freshen up and turns on some romantic mood and music, with love missed. That's exactly when McCaffrey's men strike. Dan throws vodka and shoots it, setting the assailants on fire and neutralizing them, but Jessica is taken hostage. Dan puts down his gun, but slyly grabs a knife. But when the assailant calls Dan, Sean, a painful realization hits Jessica. While the guy is yapping, Dan neutralizes him as well. Jessica runs to the kids, but finds the dummies. She knows they have to look in HyperX since that's all Kyle's been talking about. But honestly, they should have used a bit better gameplay, because Kyle's trash. Still he finishes the game with 30 kills. Just as the game ends, their parents arrive and pick them up. Dan finally comes clean, he's a covert assassin and his ex-colleagues are here to kill him, but the kids don't buy it, until they get shot at. Taking cover behind a car, Dan neutralizes her, but her vest keeps her alive, so they go for a quick round two. Dan finally comes clean about his history of being McCaffrey's mercenary and that he's killed 42 people. Kyle thinks Dan is a hypocrite and now they understand why Dan never wanted to leave the city and is so against social media. He hands them their new identities. Nina is now Molly and Kyle is Van, like a vehicle. After 18 years of lies, the family refuses to accept him. Jessica is leaving him and will take responsibility for the kids. She calls Gwen asking for help, while Dan is left to guard outside until the very morning. Despite Dan trying to explain that it's not safe and McCaffrey will come after them, Jessica just tells him to make it safe and stay away from them. When Jessica arrives, it turns out Gwen is a pretty powerful woman, and I wouldn't be surprised if she works with McCaffrey. Suddenly Gwen is talking about her ex, who made a whole new life with an insufferable woman and such. Then she made friends with the woman and waited for her to walk into her trap. Yeah, Jessica has been conned. McCaffrey is here, so unexpected. McCaffrey gives Dan a call, showing his family is in his captivity. He arranges a meeting in an abandoned hotel. McCaffrey's henchmen are all over the place. Dan must be flattered. Arriving at the penthouse, McCaffrey asks for a sarcastical hug. It turns out, he's Dan's father. McCaffrey wanted Dan dead because he abandoned him. But for the past few days, Dan wasted every man McCaffrey sent at him. His father wants him back. How many times will this twist? If Dan comes back to work for him, he will let his family go. If he refuses, his family dies. With no other option, Dan agrees to do it. Suddenly the morals kick in for the kids, they want Jessica to protect Dan, even though they wanted to cut ties with him a second ago. Kyle childishly pushes elevator buttons, and while the kids try to persuade their mother that they can't abandon Dan, Jessica starts changing Max's diaper and stuffs it in the bad guy's face, throwing him off to his death. They will go get their dad back. While McCaffrey goes to make some arrangements, Gwen uses her feminine wiles to seduce Dan back into loving her, ignoring the tech guy. She's aware of Dan's tactics. 
The family is there to rescue him. As he puts Gwen to sleep, the tech guy is taken captive. Dan apologizes for keeping secrets from Jessica and promises to always tell her the truth. He wants to be her husband and a loving father. Meanwhile McCaffrey notices that something is wrong. By the way, the tech guy is Kyle's fan. Kyle tries out the drone and turns out Dan is really good with technology. The henchmen are coming. He tells his family to go to the roof and he will deal with them. Kyle will be his eyes and ears. Kyle uses the drone to spot McCaffrey's men and relays information to Dan, who despite the numbers, skillfully deals with them. McCaffrey notices that the drone is aiding Dan and wakes Gwen up to find the family. Dan tells his dad to call it off, but he doesn't listen and despite 10 guys shooting with automatic rifles, no one manages to hit Dan. Noticing the elevator going up, Jessica hides the kids and shoots as the elevator arrives, but Gwen just chilled on the left. Gwen taunts Jessica, knowing that she has an advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, not taking her seriously. With still solid comms, Kyle says there are 9 guys left. Dan boinks them one by one, because why hire people that can shoot straight? At least McCaffrey is proud, he finally shoots down the drone. Meanwhile, in the prolonged catfight, Gwen comes out victorious, burying Jessica under a pile of rubble. McCaffrey knocks Dan down and has a clear shot on him, but he has to yap about how weak family has made him. Meanwhile Gwen corners the kids and that gives Jessica strength to lift up the debris, but she is still thrown around like a sack of potatoes. Dan manages to get bullets out of McCaffrey's gun, so they resort to a stick-to-hand combat. Gathering her inner strength, Jessica picks up a bamboo stick and goes for an athletic jump, but fails miserably. Gwen finds it hilarious and thinks Jessica is going for another try, but this time she throws it, killing her. McCaffrey overpowers Dan in hand-to-hand -hand combat and picks up the gun with bullets, ready to finally end it. But then the family runs in, Nina explains that they don't hate him and mentions that family is the most important thing in life that includes him, her grandpa. That bought enough time for Dan to do that. Family finally reunites and the cops are there to greet them. Six months later, Nina became a renowned journalist. Dan now runs a security firm to train clients to defend themselves, even employing Augie. Jessica is a coach and Kyle is still streaming. The family prepares for a major journey, loading up a rented RV for a cross-country road trip designed to bring Nina to Stanford. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this.